How have UPS contracts changed in 2019? I would say some of the most notable impacts have been in some of the surcharges. So uh, obviously in 2018, UPS took a massive increase in their overmax fee. Uh, that's if you're shipping very large packages, uh, whether it be long or heavy, that fee went from $300 to $650 by the end of the year. Um, this year, that fee is obviously still in effect after having also taken a pretty substantial peak surcharge during the holidays. Uh, if you ship heavy things or large things, that hurts. It's more than double the cost of what it was the year before. Um, that in addition to around a 5% increase in the annual rates um, across the board with UPS means your costs are going up. Um, that, that's something you can't necessarily combat automatically through the way you ship. So it's more about managing the way that those impact uh, your, your rates directly. A rate impact analysis is something that is crucial from one year to the next in understanding how your costs can increase or decrease without necessarily making any operational changes to your shipping. Meaning you could ship the same number of packages, the same size packages, all to the same location. Your costs are still gonna vary because of the way that the rates have changed. So that impact analysis is essentially taking the new rates, the new surcharges, and the new costs from the carrier and applying them to your historical data to understand same things, same things shipping in the same places, how are your, your costs gonna change from year to year? So assessing the health of your contract is essentially understanding where you are now. Uh, and that's actually one of the tips uh, I mentioned in an article that I recently wrote about negotiating your best UPS and FedEx contracts. But what it is is understanding where you are now. And the health of your contract is essentially where you compare with shippers of similar size, spend, and shipping characteristics. So if you are shipping something and the company down the street who happens to be the same size company as you, shipping to the same customer, is paying less, it means that you're, uh, you're having some opportunity to improve your contract. So the way that Logistic helps customers understand the health of their contract is by analyzing, um, it's, it's essentially a shipper profile made up of over 100 points in your shipping profile. What it means is every surcharge you could possibly be applied, every service level you could possibly ship on, and what your rates are currently for those services. Um, what we wanna understand is if for a shipper of your size, is there room to improve that? Or are you doing amazing already? If you're at the, the top tier of a shipper of your size, we'll let you know that your contract is uh, essentially optimally healthy. So one of the other tips that we recommend for people who are one, looking to assess the health of their contract, but two, essentially try to lower your costs is to manage the negotiation process. And one key tip that uh, I included in the article I recently wrote about 10 tips to negotiate your best contract was knowing what to ask for, how to ask for it, and when. Um, and the analogy I use is it's like telling a good joke. The, uh, the punchline is everything and the delivery is everything. So you don't wanna give that punchline up too soon. And the way that that applies to a negotiation is very similar. You wanna know uh, what concessions you're going to be asking for within the negotiation, and even more importantly, when to ask for them. There's an appropriate time when you demand certain concessions in your contract and other ones that are very easy to ask throughout the contract. So knowing that, kind of knowing the temperament of your rep and engaging the, the process of the negotiation is very, very important because it's going to have a substantial outcome on the concessions that the carriers ultimately make in your favor.